good afternoon. My name is Stephanie Chow. I am a first year MBA from MIT Sloan. And I, on behalf of the organizing team, I'd like to welcome you all to the first pitch case competition sponsored by Zebra. Today we have a panel of judges who are joining us today, and I'd like to take this time to introduce them. First, we have Eric Petrosinelli, General Manager, Zebra. We have Frank Hawkins and Tom Spock, who are 22-year colleagues and founding partners of Scalar Media Partners. Corbin Petro, president of Elevate Health Solutions. And Larry Latafe, director of retail planning and strategy for the Kraft Sports Group. Zebra MotionWorks is the official on-field player provi tracking provider of the NFL, and this year we had 23 global NBA teams submit to be involved in this case competition. And we have the three finalist teams here today to provide us with a 10-minute presentation followed by five minutes judges Q&A. And we would like to welcome the first team who's with us, Harvard Business School, so that you can hear their recommendations for Zebra. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to introduce my teammates, Matthew Quinn and Daniel Adler. My name is Ali Habib, and we're MBA students from the Harvard Business School. Zebra is currently in a great position. The technology behind MotionWorks is industry leading, and the ability to secure a deal with the NFL was quite a feat. What we've done over the last few weeks is investigate what's next. And to do this, we started by looking across the sports industry to identify the high potential areas that Zebra is positioned to capitalize on. We filter these ideas based on the competitive landscape, the ability to monetize, as well as long-term scalability. And what we've landed at are five key recommendations that we'd like to share with you today. Some of these ideas are core to what Zebra currently does. Some move into adjacent fields, while others look at new market applications with strong potential. We firmly believe that a focus on these recommendations over the next 36 months will help elevate Zebra to that next level. I'll turn it over to Matt, who will provide some of the key insights that led us to these specific ideas. Thanks, Ali. So we see the Zebra of today as an impressive company. It's got a great partner, but to be Zebra of tomorrow, where it must evolve to become the leader in real-time on-field analytics, there's a few things that have to happen. One, it needs to diversify its product portfolio into a more rich set of data that is not just informative, but invaluable. This will enable them to, them to diversify their current client base from the NFL into multiple leagues. What type of data is this? This is real-time ball tracking technology. It is health and wellness statistics. It is any piece of data that a fan, player, or coach wants on a real-time basis to make decisions that incrementally improve the position of their fantasy team or their team on the court. The way they're going to do this is through an informative set of channels and products which really change the way that sports data is analyzed in the marketplace. What's this going to create? It's going to create a brand which is ubiquitous with industry-leading innovation in sports data. You may ask why this is so critical. This space is becoming incredibly crowded. As, as you can see on the top left, the NHL is work, working with Sports Vision, pioneering in puck technology, as was shown in the recent All-Star game. In the MLB, TrackMan is working to build StatCast out, and this is going to be rolled out across all 30 stadiums for real-time analysis and infographics, as Rob Manfred discussed yesterday. In the NBA, you have SportsView, who is pioneering uh, direct-to-consumer technology, which is enabling them to have the data at their fingertips. As you've seen across this conference, NBA defensive metrics is really being revolutionized and enabling some really interesting papers to be written. And as you can guess, all of these players want a slice of the NFL's pie. So that Zebra has to be really, really cautious and really, really upfront about what they're going to do about it. The way we see this happening is by solidifying its NFL partnership. 
The NFL has multiple issues. It is the biggest league in the US. However, there are things that it needs to improve. They know that the digital footprint of their, of their fan base and fantasy creates incredibly engaged consumers. Anything that Zebra can do to improve this will be critical. Secondly, the in-stadium experience is deteriorating. How many panels do you need at this conference talking about the in-stadium experience and how it just isn't up to par anymore? Less than 49% of current consumers, consumers prefer to watch the game in the stadium than at home. And finally, the broadcast deal. The NFL has set a goal of $25 billion of revenue. To get to this, anything that Zebra can do to really improve the experience for the fan at home is also going to be very appealing. Daniel's now going to discuss what our specific recommendations are. All right, so a lot of, lot of build-up here, talking about these recommendations. What the heck are they going to be? So we talked a little bit about what Zebra does well. I think Zebra and Zebra are the same thing. And uh, so what we did, we looked at what Zebra does well. We thought about the NFL's problems, and we've come up with specific recommendations for some of the biggest areas, especially on the fan experience side. So we have a recommendation in the TV space, the digital space, fantasy and gaming, and then some in-stadium ideas. So Jumping into our first, first recommendation, uh, I have a lot of friends who are really big football fans, and I asked them, I said, what did you think of the Thursday Night Football, what did you think of the player tracking stuff on Thursday Night Football? And the responses range from, what are you talking about, to, oh, you mean the thing where, uh, where you have the, the lines with the guys, or maybe a little mile per hour thing? Yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, these were really passionate football fans, and that was about the extent of their knowledge of next-gen stats, which is Zebra's offering there. And the problem, of course, is that during a national broadcast, if you can't explain something incredibly quickly, it can't go on the air for everybody. Our proposal is let's have a place where you can explain things in a little longer form. So we thought about it, and it's pretty natural for Thursday Night Football, right now, for half the games, they're broadcast on two different channels. Exact same thing on two channels. Maybe we take the NFL Network, make that a next-gen stats type broadcast. ESPN has already done something similar for the college football playoff where they have a number of specifically tailored broadcasts. And we think this type of idea, whether it's NFL Network or maybe Red Zone, which is just totally dormant right now during Thursday Night Football, could be that place to expose fans to the full, full complement of the next-gen stats. Eventually, this is something where maybe it's a channel you charge for, or it's just something to make the game more popular. And again, that, that helps Zebra at the end of the day. If fans really like these stats, it gets more people watching. It's much more valuable. Our second idea, same problem. People don't see these stats enough. This, this needs to be kind of a full slate of different ways to introduce these stats as highlights. So it could be you know, a six second clip on Vine, just one play, all the way through to a weekly studio show on ESPN or NFL Network, where people are highlighting the capabilities of the next-gen stats and showing, showing fans what it can do, and we think fans will get really hooked. The other advantage here is it's a chance to try things out. Right now, the national broadcast, you can't put some type of experimental thing on the air. There's too many people watching. Phil Simms will probably get confused himself. Uh, you need to find a place where you can try things out. So if you put something up on Twitter and only a few people like it, that's not a big deal. So give that a try. It's really a chance to experiment with new ideas and find out what fans really like, what are the things that could eventually be ready for prime time. Cool. Thanks, Daniel. This next recommendation is of particular relevance this week. I don't know if you guys saw the ESPN 538 article, but it was talking about how Madden player ratings are generated. And it's pretty shocking in this day of age with all the data and information that we have. It's a single mind behind it. It's a pretty black box process. And it leads to some subjective results. Obviously, we think Zebra has the capacity to fill this gap. Real time, objective data. We recommend working with the NFL to license this data to gamers such as Madden. Similarly, you have another huge audience in fantasy football players. Yes, there's been a growth over the last decade in fantasy, but that explosion is going to continue when you think about daily fantasy. Everyone kind of wants that edge, and the amount of money being spent on fantasy-related products is incredible. Work with the NFL, license this data, and we see two main benefits here. 
not only does it provide that continuous uh, licensing revenue stream, but more importantly, as we mentioned earlier, Zebra needs to build its brand. Going through these channels gives you a critical audience, over 40 million fans between Madden and fantasy football. This is definitely a must to build a brand. Next, this kind of moves again into the in-stadium. Instead of talking about it, we have a solution. What we recommend is partnering with a smartware technology company to bring some of the aspects of the great TV experience into the stadium. How many times are you sitting in the stadium, you're in the second deck, you're even struggling to find it, who's who on the field. You can't even follow who's in the game, who has the ball. Zebra's player technology fills that gap. We imagine wearing like a Google Glass type device where you see it from your, state, uh, from your view, but now these stats are overlaid virtually so that it enhances the experience. And you might think that, oh, this technology is so far out, but it's actually being implemented in certain sports such as sailing already. And you think about personal fitness, the millennials, everyone's becoming more comfortable with smartware technology. And we like this because there's flexibility in the revenue streams. Not only you could charge a subscri subscription model to your customers, but if you want the fans to get it for free, you can even start displaying virtual ad revenues. So in between the, the quarters and the games, you could virtually um, put up ads. Finally, our last idea kind of moves into that new space. Zebra's focused on getting in all the stadiums. But there's a really big problem right outside of the stadium, and Zebra's position to actually solve this. When Robert Kraft came to campus earlier this year, he said this was the single biggest pain point for his fans, the parking and traffic congestion. When you think about Zebra's capabilities as a bigger company with the asset tracking uh, intelligence, they're positioned to do this. Printing RFID passes onto the parking passes to monitor the parking and help stadium operators avoid kind of the traffic congestion that keeps people outside of the stadiums. Thanks, Ali. So there's a lot to do. In addition to just improving the existing technology, making it smaller, making it more efficient, we have these recommendations. We believe the core recommendations, one and two, can be Monday morning actions. These are things you can start to implement and test with the dormant channels that exist. For recommendation three, four, and five, we see these as opportunities that will happen over the next 12 months. But to be in a really strong position in, 12 month, in uh, 36 months' time when the next negotiation happens with the NFL, we feel that you must start these by the end of the year. In summation, we think there is an amazing opportunity for Zebra to really become the ubiquitous brand that will enable it to become the leader in real-time on-field analytics. Thank you. So thank you very much. That was a great presentation. Very well, very, very thoughtful. Um, you noted early on, uh, and I congratulate you for picking it up, that Zebra does not have the data rights to the NFL output now. So uh, in, in your last chart, the numbers one and two, how do you get started on that? And what's the payback and monetization strategy or, or the value of the investment uh, in starting that when you have negotiate with NFL for uh, revenue sharing as part of the second thing? Yeah, uh, I'll take a shot at that. So yeah, that is kind of a challenge. You don't own the data, so it's not that you can independently make these decisions. But as you're working with the NFL during the off season to think about the applications, they're thinking about this too. So the incentives are aligned. And really what, throughout all of these, what it deals with the data, we don't think about the revenue, incremental revenue generation directly. Right? Like this is very small compared to Zebra overall, but what it does do, it positions you and it makes you so invaluable for the NFL that in three years time, if you're doing all of these initiatives, the payback's gonna come in with that new deal, uh, new deal signing. And that positions you, again, for the incremental deals you can sign with other sports. So these are just kind of like the small direct revenue. Even if you don't get any of, it, any of this, we see huge value in making yourself so invaluable for that next deal signing. Just to add, in terms of how do you appeal to the NFL, what's their, what's their, their upside is huge. Frankly, uh, it's almost what's in it for Zebra, which I think Ali covered. From the NFL standpoint, you have these amazing tools, and I've had the opportunity to kind of see behind the scenes. I think everybody's seen some of the things Zebra can do, and right now it's not getting out there. So the NFL knows they have some of these issues. 
how can we get more people watching the games, especially Thursday night football this year. Some of the games early in the year were really crummy uh, in terms of competitiveness. Well, maybe this is an extra way to draw people. Maybe somebody who's thinking this game I've checked out uh, in terms of competitiveness, let's flip over to red zone and see a whole new way of watching football. I think that, that should be very appealing. The NFL clearly is interested. They signed this deal with Zebra. They, they've spent a lot of time testing these uh, this technology. They want, they want this to happen, and I think right now offering it to them in a way that won't be terribly costly for them, that they can immediately recognize revenue on some new channels is, uh, is a good way to make that happen. Um, one question I had was on the in-stadium smartware application. Um, you know, there's a, um, a school of thought that, you know, from an in-stadium fan experience uh, standpoint, like people go there to really, you know, experience the game and that, you know, providing them technologies could be, you know, disruptive. And I think some of the applications that we've seen over the years have been somewhat hit or miss, like a, say, like a fan vision. Um, and so I'm curious to, um, from your perspective as, um, you know, implementing a solution such as that from an in-stadium standpoint, do you think it would be disruptive where they're really trying to go there to like experience something radically different, which is the emotion of the game, you know, and kind of like the camaraderie that they wouldn't necessarily get at home? So uh, I think our initiative is trying to be as minimalist as possible. So trying, you think you're at the game, there's, you know, there's a lot of players on the field. You don't know who exactly there is. You don't know where the ball is. You don't know where the down line is. Just overlaying that information without bombarding you with lots of other information, we think won't intrude to the, you know, the general dynamic of the game. And the way we see it is, it's really one of those things you turn off and on as, you, as the plays occur. So it's something that really doesn't intrude. And I think it's purely additive, because you watch at home, you see so many amazing things, so many amazing stats. But really, at the game, all you want is just to know where the ball is. And so that little bit of addition, I think, hopefully won't take away. I mean, you already see my grandfather, when he goes to NFL games, he wears headphones and listens to the radio because he likes to know who's making the play. Um, but it does, it isolates him. It puts him in a little bit of a bubble. And sometimes we have to tap him on the shoulder and say, hey, come on, talk to us. Uh, so I think just, just what Matt was saying, this is something that could be very non-intrusive. It's just a small overlay. And just one more quick thing. It was, they mentioned this during the talk yesterday. They're not two distinct things. It's almost like in retail, online, offline. Thinking as them too distinct isn't the way to go. How do you blend them? Your customer doesn't think, oh, I'm watching in stadium, I only see this. I watch at home, I only see this. So really kind of blending the two and trying to get that optimal experience, this kind of like introduces, works towards that solution. Is that it? Yeah, cool. Thank you very much. Next, we have the Tuck School of Business at Dartmouth. Great. Oh, can I have the clicker? Good afternoon. My name is Fawn Zo, and I'm joined on stage today by my colleagues Jeff and Adam. Over the next 10 minutes, we want to share with you our perspective on the future growth potential of Zebra MotionWorks. We'll split the discussion into three main parts. I'll provide a brief overview of the market and how Zebra can differentiate itself from the competitors already in the space. However, we want to spend the majority of this discussion really sharing our two-step vision for Zebra's future. First, Adam will discuss how Zebra can own the screen. By providing unique digital products and partnerships, we believe that Zebra can revolutionize the fan experience, from the large in-stadium jumbotrons all the way down to the mobile smartphone in your pockets. Then, Jeff will share how Zebra's technology can go beyond the screen by providing stadium owners with innovative ways to think about the fan experience, as well as providing um, additional stakeholders new pieces of information. So let's dive in. Zebra operates in a large and growing market with several potential options for growth. These options stem from the diverse array of players already in the market today. These players range in size, expected growth, as well as our ability to target these specific segments. As you can see in the top right hand of this chart, we believe that pay TV and video on demand subscribers represent the greatest near-term revenue potential for Zebra. That being said, 
We also believe that there is substantial revenue opportunities, both within fantasy football, as well as with NFL season ticket holders. We'll dive into the specific ways we can address each of these segments later on in this presentation. But for now, let's shift our focus towards the competitive landscape. It's crowded, with several other companies offering similar technologies. However, we believe Zebra has two main advantages. First, its partnership with the NFL gives it access to a sport which grosses the highest average revenue per game. This underscores not only the large and dedicated fan base within the NFL, but also the potentially lucrative payoff if Zebra is able to capture even a small slice of that revenue. Additionally, Zebra's technology is really the only one that's been able to integrate both real-time data capture with enhanced visualizations for the fan. Combined, we believe that these two advantages mean that Zebra's future really hinges on being able to own the screen and provide fans with new and unique experiences, while also thinking beyond the screen and delivering forward-thinking partnerships that can position it to succeed beyond the boundaries of the NFL. Let me now turn it over to Adam, who will share with you some of our specific ideas. Thanks, Vaughn. Wherever they go, fans consume sports on screens. Whether that's the jumbotron in stadium or the phone in your pocket, we believe Zebra has an opportunity to revolutionize how sports fans watch games by owning the screens in which they consume content. First, Zebra has the opportunity to enhance the in-stadium experience through a product we call Deeper Look. Deeper Look would enable venue operators to provide more intelligent replays that enhance the viewing experience. It would overlay individual player tracking tools and advanced statistics that bring next-gen statistics to the stadium experience and make it a much, more, much richer experience for fans. Going beyond the stadium, Zebra has an opportunity to own the screens in their individual fans' homes. Fans today are largely loyal to individual players as much as they are individual teams. The NFL is a collection of superstars as much as it is a collection of individual franchises. And Game Alert is our solution to helping fans take control over what they watch and be able to watch who they want, who they want to watch, not just the individual teams they prefer. Game Alert would partner with an existing NFL premium TV package, such as NFL Sunday Ticket. Subscribers would be able to put in a custom list of their favorite players, maybe based on their fantasy team or on those that went to their alma mater. And as subscribers are watching the game, they'd receive alerts in their feed that allowed them to see, oh, Julian Edelman's streaking down the sideline towards the end zone. I can instantly click into that app and launch the live screen that shows me what's going on in real time. No longer do I have to find the highlights of my favorite players after the game, but I'm able to see in real time what's going on with individual players. It allows the customization that fans desire as the league becomes much more individual-centric and less focused on teams. Zebra's unique RFID technology makes this possible because it knows where every single player is on the field at any given point in time. But moving beyond the television set, Zebra has the opportunity to take the in-home viewing experience to the next level. Fans today are largely passive viewers of football. They receive a broadcast and essentially receive whatever stats, analysis, and replays that that broadcast provider wants to show. We believe a second screen viewing experience, which we call GameSync, has the opportunity to customize and make the view in-home viewing experience much more interactive. It allows fans to customize individual replays and analysis they actually want to see. It starts as an iPhone or an iPad app and provides in, interactive capabilities where you can draw a line between two players and see the average separation throughout the duration of a replay. It just provides that next level of engagement that allows fans to augment their television or in-stadium experience with advanced statistics and replays. Zebra's generating massive amounts of data as part of this, and they have the opportunity to revolutionize the viewing experience, and we believe this data is crucial to Zebra's future success. Much like Sabermetrics revolutionized how baseball players get evaluated by fans, we propose a new set of statistics that can change the game for accurately predicting player performance, and we call these Zebra Metrics. With more than 30 million fantasy football players and over $10 billion being used every year in this market, there's a tremendous opportunity to help fantasy football players gain that competitive edge and find ways to more accurately predict player performance. So I've shown you how Zebra can own the screen, from the jumbotrons in stadium to the mobile smartphone in your pocket. And now I'll turn it over to Jeff, who will talk about how Zebra can go beyond the screen. Thanks, Adam. 
So let's go beyond the screen. First, with the introduction of ZPass, a Zebra RFID chip-enabled wristband worn by the fan. Never before has an all-in-one tracking device tracked the fan and also provided value to the fan in-game experience. And with ZPass, in conjunction with a mobile app, we can have fans earning points. They can find deals to concessions based on their location in the stadium, and they can get customized, immediate, and data-enriched replays to their mobile devices to keep them engaged in the 40 seconds in between every play. This also gives venues unprecedented insight into their most valued customers. For the first time, understanding when do season ticket holders actually come to the game, what do they buy, and what content do they consume. So now let's move from Sunday to Saturday with the introduction of Zebra MotionWorks into NCAA football, which we suggest is done conference by conference and in conjunction with the rollout of our Own the Screen platform that Adam suggested. But this data that the NCAA teams will be collecting, it's also incredibly valuable to NFL teams as they prepare for the most complex drafting process in sports every spring. And we would monetize that through Draft Pack by selling the data to NFL teams. So let's take a quick step back. We've talked to you about how we're going to own the screen, from deeper look on the in-stadium jumbotron to controlling your Sunday experience in your home with GameAlert and GameSync. We've given you Zebra metrics to appeal to the fantasy fo football guru who wants an edge. And I've taken you beyond the screen with ZPass, and with bringing MotionWorks to the NCAA. Altogether, we believe this represents a very near-term and actionable $30 million of revenue, but we also want to look to the longer term, and for that we go beyond football, and first to the Olympics. We think that MotionWorks technology can be sold to Olympic teams as they prepare and train for the Olympics, and also to Olymp Olympic venues, to allow them to provide a data-enriched, next-generation, statistic-enabled broadcast for the hundreds of millions of viewers who watch the Olympics every two years. And with the Olympics potentially coming here to Boston in, two, in 2024, who knows what Zebra could have ready. And to the running industry, an industry that's booming. Running event finishers has doubled from 2005 to 2013 to almost 20 million people. If there's an opportunity to take Zebra Motion Works from the current enclosed stadium environment to the outdoors, we believe there's a partnership opportunity with every race from your local 5K to the Boston Marathon. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Fawn. Zebra's partnership with the NFL has laid the groundwork to bring data and the fan experience closer together than ever before. But by owning the screen with a variety of digital products and partnerships, we believe Zebra can play a pivotal role in ensuring the popularity of the NFL for decades to come. And by moving beyond the screen to the NCAA and stadium owners, we believe Zebra can provide unprecedented levels of information to key stakeholders. And finally, by moving beyond football, we believe Zebra can become a sports experience platform that can enrich sports and sporting events worldwide. Thank you. Uh, thanks, you guys. Um, I guess I have a, a number of questions, but I guess I'll um, I'll start with the uh, the beyond beyond football. So um, RFID has been used in um, to track runners and in road races for for many many years. So I'm just curious, what makes Zebra's tool unique in this application, and, and how you envision it adding incremental value? Yeah. So. Uh, the technology application, I think, needs to take a step forward, but current technology has RFID chips embedded in bibs or on something that you attach to your shoe, and it only triggers when you go over a rubber mat. So there's no way to consistently track a runner throughout an entire race. There's no way to see every mile split or pace at any given moment. And so if we're able to take RFID monitors and make them such that you could constantly be picking some RFID chip up throughout the entire race, that's where we see the next generation of this coming. So, so why is RFID better than suggestive 
I, I think with GPS, there may be a cost as well as a bulkiness factor. I think when you think about the athletes who are going to be want, putting these bibs on, uh, putting these sort of trackers on themselves, these would be the professionals. And they don't want something that they will potentially weigh them down. And given Zebra's sort of proven integration with the NFL's equipment and the fact that the players forget that they have these pads on them, we think RFID may present a, a better option. Um, and also with GPS, there may be a potential battery component. Some of these endurance events, such as the Ironman, last anywhere from eight to 10 hours. And so having a GPS may provide um, a power component that may also be constraining. With the ZPass representing the largest revenue opportunity, can you talk about the economics of that? So the $50 price point, as well as the cost and potential ROI of that? Yeah, absolutely. So I think our initial rollout model is by selling this as part of the season ticket holder package. And so the average NFL ticket, I think, costs about $85. So multiply that by eight for any season ticket holder, and you're talking $700 or so. And so I think $50 represents, a, especially if you can demonstrate the attractiveness and kind of the ROI to the fan, I think $50 is a pretty easy entry point. I think longer term, revenue-wise, the opportunity is to sell this to any casual fan coming to a single game at the gate and charging something like a $10 upgrade fee um, and just having these available at every gate to the, to the customer. Uh, in terms of ROI, I think it's there for the consumer and that's, that's what will drive revenue. In terms of ROI for Zebra, I don't, I don't know the exact cost, so that, that, that's a little more tricky for me to figure out in my head. Uh, got a question on GameSync, uh, and particularly um, how the business model there is going to work. Um, since it's multiple cameras, trackable via iPad or whatever, um, you're going to have capital cost to set up the source cameras. Uh, the app itself probably is doable relatively easily, um, but um, what do you see as the financing and recovery model um, for installing cameras in 32 stadiums sufficient to make this a compelling product? Yeah, I think there's, there's two approaches. I think one is partner with cameras that are already existing in stadiums or existing broadcast providers um, and working out a partnership arrangement where you're not including the upfront capital costs on behalf of Zebra. I think that's the most logical first step and we really, see this, the value of this coming from the hardcore fan. They want, they want those multiple angles. They want, these are the people that are not your casual viewers. Um, so from a financing standpoint, I think it is partnering with existing TV providers that, and the venues that already have cameras installed. So it would be basically the cameras that the director didn't choose as opposed to follow your fantasy players, et cetera. Correct, but it allows you to have, because the RFID technology tracks every player, you have access to know who's on the field, and you can have that database of knowing where everybody is at any given point. So it, it's allowing you to customize that viewing experience around 20 different viewing angles that already exist, but like you said, the director does not necessarily choose. And now we have the Wharton team from the University of Pennsylvania. Thank you. How do I, sorry, just scroll down back. Got it, have it down there as well. Okay, perfect. All right, um, we are from the Wharton School. I'm Michaela DeSantis. These are my teammates, Kit Newman and Vikram Iremilli. I will take you through a brief preview of what we're gonna be talking about in our presentation, um, hit on pain points a little bit, and then lay out a framework for our solution. Vic is gonna be speaking to our solution in more detail and our recommendation. Kit's gonna be talking about the current landscape and how Zebra is positioned to win. So, ah, yes, our title slide needed that. Um, right, so right now, there are a number of shortcomings and pain points that exist in the consumption of sports. We believe that Zebra is very well positioned to address many of these. Um, Zebra can build on its current foundation, you know, of, and all the partnerships that it has with teams and leagues in the, in the NFL, sorry, with the NFL, NFL teams, and uh, connect with fans 
beyond how it already does. And whether this is from you know, using its existing player performance tracking to in the near term future looking at in stadium enhancements, we believe Zebra can do this with the technology it already has today. And through a combination of products, Zebra is very strongly positioned to grow in a market that we think has potential of reaching over 130 million in annual revenues. Now, given that this market is incredibly attractive, the competition is fierce, and if you, as you've heard other teams mention, there are already other players in the space. So given that this is the case, we believe Zebra should focus on expanding its content relationships with leagues, also in parallel with developing new solutions, which we're gonna be talking about in subsequent slides. Now, with respect to pain points, you can see a lot on the slide here. You've heard them talk a lot about at panels yesterday, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail. But the one thing I do wanna say is that, and highlight, is that they exist across the spectrum. Um, they exist for all stakeholders right now in sports, from leagues trying to reach both casual and avid fans, to maybe perhaps fans trying to access content remotely when they're not near um, a TV or actually at the game in person, or perhaps to those who are at the game and they're just feeling really disconnected from what's happening on the field. Right, so right now, how is Zebra positioned to win? As we've heard mentioned, Zebra currently has a strong relationship with the NFL, and they should use this to their advantage. We'll go into this now in terms of our solution, but we'll start with existing revenue channels. Zebra, we believe, can significantly enhance its current solution that it already offers to both league broadcasters and NFL teams. But we think is even more exciting are the new avenues through which Zebra can use its technology. And they can significantly improve the fan experience, um, meeting growing demands, addressing pain points like we talked about. And these four channels are mobile applications, online game tracking, fantasy sports, and in-stadium experience. And what's important to note though, that this isn't only applicable to the NFL. We believe that this can be globally scaled across, across leagues, teams, and other sport organizations. So I'll hand it over to Vic to talk more about this. Thanks, Michaela. To start, we believe Zebra can enhance its existing offerings to the NFL, its broadcast partners, as well as teams. As Zebra's technology is integrated into all NFL stadiums, we believe that its suite of next generation highlights can be inclu included in all live broadcasts, not just Thursday night football. And additional contextualization can be provided to help fans better understand the performance of their favorite players. For example, imagine LaShawn McCoy's speed bursts on an 80 yard touchdown being compared to a world record sprint by Usain Bolt, or Vince Wilfork's return of a fumble recovery being compared to William the Refrigerator Perry rumbling down a football field. For teams, Zebra can develop more powerful predictive algorithms which provide analytics on player health. This was a key need which was highlighted by Sean Payton of the New Orleans Saints yesterday in his panel. Now moving on to new revenue channels we feel Zebra can exploit. As Zebra begins to collect an exhaustive suite of data and highlights, we believe it should develop a mobile app to monetize this content. We call this app Stripe Media, and it would allow fans to access curated highlights, daily and weekly top 10 plays, and video packages focused on individual teams or players. We believe Stripe Media can be priced through a freemium model with certain videos available for free, supported by ads, and others hosted behind a paywall for more serious fans. Our next idea focuses on GameCast technology. As many of us who have used these technologies know, they're often quite reliable and provide frustrating user experiences, given that innovation in this space has not really kept pace with innovation in other forms of social media. We believe that Zebra's technology can provide real-time, on-demand illustration of route patterns and player and ball movements from any game, which would enrich the experience for fans unable to watch on TV or in a stadium. This technology could also integrate fantasy football statistics and fantasy scoring updates as well. Speaking of fantasy football, we believe that Zebra is well positioned to drive further innovation in the fantasy gaming industry. As we've heard these last two days, the fantasy sports space is currently booming. There are a number of well-funded companies which are aggressively marketing to customers and seeking to establish dominancy. Zebra's technology can help these players differentiate their services from each other by offering gamers with real-time, highly accurate statistics for one. Zebra can also utilize its technology to provide fantasy players with more accurate predictive scoring engines, as well as new statistical categories which can enhance fantasy competition. 
Finally, we believe that Zebra has the opportunity to enhance in-stadium fan engagement. We believe Zebra can take advantage of these massive new jumbotrons which have been installed and which are being installed in stadiums across the country by providing operators with the same set of next-gen highlights which fans are able to watch at home. Zebra can also partner with teams and stadium operators to introduce gamification elements into apps which many teams operate. Contests could include predictions on in-game outcomes as well as player statistics which would increase fan engagement during games. Before Kit dives into the market opportunities I've out that I have outlined, we believe there are three blue sky opportunities for Zebra to build awareness of its, fan, uh, awareness of its technology amongst common fans. First, we believe Zebra can partner with video game companies like EA Sports to ensure that player ratings are done in a more robust and accurate manner. Second, we believe Zebra can develop home kits to allow the common fan to track their own performance and statistics during pickup games. And when you're creating a player, your own player in Madden, you can use these statistics to build that player even more accurately. Finally, Zebra can partner with companies developing wearable devices to ensure that these products capture data as accurately as possible. And now I'd like to pass it on to Kit. Thanks, Vikram. When we thought about market size and we broke it down on the six channels that Vikram outlined, I'll flash up the key data points here. But the major point we wanted to highlight is we focused on the end customer, how many teams or how many end, uh, fantasy football players there are out there, what we thought we could charge on a per user basis, and then how many customers, whether it's a team or a provider like ESPN, Gamecast, or Yahoo, how many of those would actually adopt this technology in the marketplace broadly? What we wanted to highlight, though, is Zebra is currently playing in a market that's much smaller than its potential, and which makes us excited for the new four products that we could roll out. Specifically, we believe Zebra could reach a market that could grow to $115 to $135 million overall, and this is feasible over the next five years. Now, this would recommend a year-on-year -year growth of 20% per year, which we recognize is aggressive. But this highlights our confidence in the new product channels that Zebra can uh, roll out. Of course, with an attractive market, you always have many competitors. And Zebra's only in one small corner of the market, with the NFL contract as its centerpiece. There are many other competitors, as have been outlined many times before, all with impressive portfolios. This means that Zebra really needs to be deliberate and intentional about how they win in this market. For us, Zebra wins through three, three main prongs. First, focusing on the data, providing that best-in-class solution, whether it's through the current RFID chip or adapting it for other leagues internationally. The second is the fan engagement suite, which Vikram talked about at length, bringing the, bringing the game to fans in a way that they want to consume the data. And the final piece is we talk a lot about data for the players, but what about the data that Zebra provides to its clients and its advertisers? We need to focus on metrics as we roll these products out that prove our success story to our clients. In addition to the fan engagement suite, we, need, we believe that Zebra needs to quickly scale with other leagues domestically and internationally. Of course, domestically, that means focusing on deepening the relationship with the NFL, continuing that rollout to all stadiums in the NFL network, and leveraging that success to attempt to unseat competitors in other US sports before switching costs are too high. The NCAA is an interesting market, and as that matures, we believe Zebra should pr pursue that on a media, on a, on a conference by conference basis, which lines up with the media rights. Internationally, Zebra still needs to find that lighthouse customer, that first major customer to adopt the technology to prove that Zebra can play internationally. Beyond the traditional leagues and teams, things like tennis, Indian Premier League cricket also could uh, offer exciting opportunities for Zebra. But going internationally, we need to be aware of the international fan viewing may be a little bit different than we have in the US. Consider legal gambling is the, the biggest difference. But we wanted to highlight that it really, the fan engagement strategy is nothing without these league and team partnerships. So to wrap things up quickly, we wanted to highlight just the interwoven nature of the league content and the suite of fan engagement products. These fan engagement tools will not only attract more leagues to Zebra, but also will generate the returns for Zebra so they can be a lost leader on the league content side and aggressively pursue contracts and maintain the NFL contract. Overall, we're excited to see how Zebra develops over the next five years, and we look forward to your questions. Thank you. All right, thank you guys for yet another excellent presentation. You're not making our jobs easy today. Uh, just to, to go quickly, um, on your page on developing ancillary products, you talked about video and home kits and wearables. 
Uh, tell us a little bit about your concept for the home kits. What is this product? How does it work? And who are you, how are you selling it? So as, I don't know, I, I almost said young adults, I guess we're not that young anymore. Um, but as, you know, young professionals, uh, we all played in, you know, recreational sports leagues. We play in business school. So we sort of, I think, envision the, pro the market being for all those adult sports leagues. I, I played soccer. Kid, I think you played, like, flag football. And there's a big market for that. Every major city we think there is. Um, I think that we could say beer league maybe. I think there's an opportunity note there because I love it. Like we kept stats for our team and it would be easy to have a technology that shows me not only what my team stats are but how everyone else is doing. Like I worked at Fidelity. We, I wanted to know how the heck the PWC talk, soccer team was doing. So I think there's a big potential. You guys, anything? And obviously we recognize that there will need to be some advances in the technology in terms of the, you know, the sensors, the beacons that are required. So if the cost is, can be cut down and you can place those more easily, you could get much more accurate tracking than your typical kind of Fitbit or fuel band, which, you know, you shake a few times and you get points. So this would be much more, you know, cutting edge than what's out there in the market right now. Could you talk a little bit about the customer education aspects of your, your strategy in terms of helping us as you know, uneducated fans about what these stats are? What's the approach there? Yeah, I, th I think a lot of this is built towards both the avid fans who are actively seeking this data out and actively looking for it, um, as well as the casual fans. I mean, we tried to develop, especially when we talked about the integrating more and lead broadcast to contextualize the game a little bit better. Um, and I think there certainly is a, is a process of education, and that's something that the leagues and the teams will need to work with Zebra on. Um, because when, when we look at it, you know, fans want to connect to these sports, and, and, you know, sports media is such a huge part of just the viewing experience in general for every fan. And so I think the leagues and teams are going to want to push that education as well. And I think Zebra is just one part of saying, hey, this game, you may not right understand it right now, but this is one other way that you can see just how impressive these athletes are, just how you would compare, just little pieces like that to contextualize it. I've got a question on the uh, fantasy sports leagues and the daily fantasy uh, slide. Um, assuming that Zebra actually had the rights to sell this data, um, which as a former negotiator on the NFL side, I say is a very much blue sky assumption, um, Tell me whether you'd pursue ubiquity or exclusivity as a business model with respect to those daily fantasies, and if so, uh, whichever way you go, why you'd do it that way. Sure. I think uh, given that right now the space, like we mentioned, there's a number of new operators. It's not just your ESPN and Yahoo Sports. You have venture-funded guys like FanDuel, DraftKings. Our goal would be to try to get this technology you know, across the board as, to as many customers as possible. Uh, we feel like if you pigeonhole it to one exclusive contract, it kind of probably corners you into a smaller market than you might be comfortable with. Um, given that the statistics, there's a number of different ways we could go with it. You could also even see maybe exclusivity for certain types of statistics, but our goal would be to get Zebra technology across all fantasy players. Thank you to all of our contestants and also our judges who have a very difficult job before we announce the final rankings at the Alpha Awards this afternoon. So we hope you can join us then and hope you can give another round of applause to the teams that presented today. Thank you.